Presidents of the United States of America. There have been 45 of them. Out of that 45, how many of those people were connected to Scotland? Turns out quite a lot. And that's what I'm gonna be talking about right here in today's episode. That's coming right up after this. Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to my channel. My name is Sean and I am a vlogger from Edinburgh in Scotland. Right here on this channel, I celebrate the deep connections that Scottish people have with America. And my own connection with America has stretched back since 2017 when I was invited by the US Embassy on a cultural exchange mission called Exploring American Values. And ever since then, I've been hooked on learning more. And it's been said about Scotland, our, we have really deep connections with America in particular. There's a lot of people in America with Scottish ancestry, probably a lot more people in America with Scottish ancestry than there are Scottish people in Scotland. We know that as a fact already. We also know that a very large percentage of people who signed the Declaration of Independence in America were Scottish, right? In those days, it would have been conceivable that almost every family had some kind of connection to Scotland. But what about US presidents down through the ages? Because it has been said a lot of them have connections to Scotland. So I did a bit of research and digging on this and it turns out there are quite a lot. And I found 10 in fact, 10 very plausible safe connections that we can talk about. And I'm gonna do that right here in this episode. So thank you very much for joining in. It is great to see all of you here. Love to know your thoughts down in the comments below. You might even wanna correct me on a few things if I get them wrong, but like I say, great to have this connection and talk about it. And if you're new to my channel, please do not forget to hit the red subscribe button down below and become a member of this channel. All right, so I'm gonna go through them. The 10 presidents of the United States who were actually Scottish or of Scottish ancestry. And guys, listen, this video could potentially get very political. And I guarantee there are gonna be heated political debates breaking out in the discussion in the comments down below. I'm not gonna get involved in any of that. I'm not talking politics today at all. We're talking about presidents, which is an inherently political topic, but I'm not gonna be talking about politics in a modern context. I'm gonna be stating facts and that is it. No opinions on politics right here. If you wanna talk politics, you're welcome to come and join me over on Twitter where I do get involved in political discussions now and again, but not here on YouTube. So let's go through them. The first guy I wanna talk about, James Knox Polk, and he was president from 1845 to 1849. He was 11th president, James Knox. James Knox? James Polk, and he was one of the presidents that had such a very, very strong connection to Scotland and family connection. He was born in North Carolina, on the frontier of North Carolina, and had a family of, with 10 children. He had nine brothers and sisters. That's a lot, but probably normal for back then. His mother, actually, a religious woman who's very intelligent, apparently, was descended from John Knox himself. John Knox of Edinburgh, a very famous Protestant of Edinburgh, who shaped the history of my city, my hometown. Both of his parents were actually descended from Scottish Irish ancestors in some cases, but definitely Scottish, who emigrated to America in the 17th century. Polk, who was a Democrat and the 11th president of the United States, was born in 1795. That was the settling place of his Scottish great-grandfather, Robert Bruce. Robert Bruce, interesting, what a name. Robert the Bruce and all that. Robert Bruce Pollock. Really interesting that his name went from Pollock to Polk. And that seems to have happened quite a lot throughout history where people's surnames were changed ever so slightly, discreetly, but Pollock is a very Scottish name. Polk, not so much. He was obviously president, but he served seven terms as an elected official in US Congress, and he was awarded the role of Speaker of the House during his political career as well. That's fascinating. A man I knew absolutely nothing about. James Knox Polk. Number two, Woodrow Wilson. And he was president from 1913 to 1921. Wilson's Scottish connection was actually from his great grandfather, Reverend Thomas Ruggles from Paisley. Paisley is a wee place on the west coast of Scotland, quite close to Glasgow. But just outside Glasgow, really. There seems to be a lot of people who emigrated from that part of the world, especially out towards the Americas. And just like Polk, Wilson's grandparents emigrated from Scotland through Ireland and to the USA in the 19th century. I think probably um, Wilson's best known thing, what he was known for was the fact that he was part of the world leaders at the time who negotiated the end of the First World War. And rumor has it that he took a lot of his beliefs Calvinist beliefs and pacifist beliefs from his Scottish ancestry and something he was quite proud about. Number three, William McKinley. You could not get a more Scottish name than William McKinley if you tried, but he was a US president. McKinley was the seventh child of William and Nancy Allison McKinley, both Scottish Irish. And his direct line could be traced back to Macduff, Thane of Fife. Wow. And McKinley, he was the 25th US president and he was assassinated in 1901 while he was serving as president. 
fascinating. But he can actually take most of his family routes to Perthshire in Scotland, which is a, a region kind of quite central towards the Highlands, where a lot of his Methodist roots apparently came from. He was a Republican and his grandparents were involved in the American Revolutionary War. He was assassinated by anarchist Leon Zolgos in Buffalo in New York. Wow. What a fascinating story. Did not know about this man whatsoever. One of quite a few American presidents who have sadly been assassinated. And he was known for his career apparently for promoting the rights of Scottish and Irish immigrants to the United States of America in those days. So he's somebody who's not obviously not that far back in history. You know, almost modern days since he was assassinated in 1901. But far enough back that things must have been very different then nonetheless. Next on the list is Rutherford Hayes, another very Scottish name. Actually, Hayes was a character in Outlander as well. Rutherford, another Scottish name. And he was the 19th US president from 1877. Prior to that, he was the governor of Ohio. He was born in Delaware, Ohio on October 4, 1822. Through each of his parents, Hayes was descended from New England colonialists. But his earliest immigrant ancestor came to Connecticut from Scotland in 1625. So this one is quite a light touch Scottish connection and some of these presidents, to be honest with you, have quite light connections with Scotland, but they're strong enough that I'm gonna make them into this video. Next on the list is Thomas Jefferson, a founding father of the United States of America and the third president from 1801 to 1809. He wrote or helped to write the Declaration of Independence. I talked about that at the start of this video. A number of the people who wrote the Declaration were inspired by the Declaration of an Hour Bro, a very famous Scottish document, and went on to, to kind of build out the American Declaration as well. His Scottish ancestry came from his mother, Jane Randolph. As a child, Jefferson was strongly influenced by the teaching of his tutor, Mr. Douglas, who was also a Scottish clergyman. And I think what's fascinating about the, the Declaration of Independence for America was how strongly it seems to have been influenced and how the similarities come out from the Declaration of Our Broth. And it might have been that Thomas Jefferson's teachings from that clergyman, from his mother's side as well, might have contributed to that. It's fascinating to know. Next on the list is Andrew Jackson, the seventh president of the United States of America. He actually had quite a poor upbringing, obviously became a very, very well-known figure in American politics throughout history. He was a child of poor Scottish and Irish immigrants and orphaned by the American Revolution in the Carolinas. Jackson thought of himself as the voice of the common man and a direct representative of the electorate. Next on the list is Ulysses Grant. Grant, as a surname, literally could not be a more Scottish surname, right? He was the 18th president of the United States from 1869 until 1877. And the interesting thing about Grant was he was the first US president to tour Scotland and he was very fond and interested in his roots. He was despised by most of the political class. He was considered an outsider in Washington, despised by both Democrats and many people within his own party and the Republicans. Grant was very closely connected to Scotland and proud of his Scottish roots. He was also apparently a war hero and was a commanding officer in the Northern armies during the American Civil War. He defeated the Confederate forces led by Robert Lee and brought an end to slavery as well. Having such strong ancestry in Scotland, he was very well received in Scotland, uh, very well known and very well liked and he was very fond of the fact that Scottish people welcomed him so openly when he arrived. During his visits to Scotland, he went to Stirling. He visited all the monuments to Bruce and to Wallace, and he shook so many hands that he told a journalist that it should be banned because his arm was hurting. Number eight was Ronald Reagan, who was, of course, a Hollywood man before he went into politics. He was a conservative. Reagan was elected the governor of California, and in 1980, after a landslide victory, was the top job, had the top job at the White House. He never knew anything about his Scottish connection until at some point down the line, he was sent a letter from Scotland. That was in 1991. He received a letter from the minister of Castlehead Kirk in Paisley. It revealed that the US president's great great grandfather, Claude Wilson, wed Peggy Downey in the Kirk in 1807. So he, that was undeniably Scottish, Ronald Reagan's ancestry, because of that connection. Some little church in Scotland found records of that connection. That is great, what a story. Next on the list is James Monroe, another founding father and fifth president of the United States of America. And again, this is quite a common theme, but Monroe could not be a more Scottish sounding name. Very, very common here. Maybe not spelled like that nowadays, but nonetheless. Born in Virginia in 1758, his paternal great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather, Patrick Andrew Monroe, emigrated to America from Scotland in the mid 17th century and was part of an ancient Scottish clan known as Clan Monroe. Great story, absolutely love this. Nah, that's some real, real Scottish history right there, connecting Scotland and America, I love it. Number 10, this one is one we'll probably all be aware of, and if not, it is a deep connection, right? With modern day America, as it is right at this very moment in time. Number 10, the last president on this list is Donald Trump. 
I'm not sure if anybody's aware of this. Donald Trump has been known in Scotland for a very long time, probably before many people in the United States even knew who he was, unless you're a fan of The Apprentice, but Donald Trump was obviously very big in Scotland for a long time because he's got deep family connections with Scotland. His mother, Mary Ann McLeod, was Scottish and moved to New York as a teenager. She was born in Tong, a very small town on the Western Isles on the Isle of Lewis. Donald Trump, obviously very interested in his family connection with Scotland, decided to make a thing of it, came to Scotland, and nowadays he actually owns a lot of land in Scotland and he's owned it for a very long time, way before he ever thought of becoming president. He owns two golf courses, comprising a lot of land. And actually there was documentaries of him from like 10, 15 years ago of him visiting the island where his mum was from and actually going into a house of a very humble family who were in fact his cousins. And it was really remarkable. I'm gonna put a photo up here of that, that whole thing, but you can clearly see the resemblance in that whole family lineup of those people who looked exactly like Donald Trump. Bizarre. But Donald Trump is only one generation removed from being Scottish, his mum was Scottish. And if you, kind of watched all the, the drama that unfolded in New York back in, you know, the 90s and two, early 2000s with Donald Trump's weddings and all that kind of stuff. When he was like a big celebrity outside of politics, his mum was in interviewed a few times as well and you could hear that she had a, a Scottish accent. Uh, just so fascinating and fascinating that, that Trump's carried on that Scottish connection and have land in Scotland. And like I said, very well known in Scotland for a number of years now, way before he got involved in politics. And I just thought that was an interesting fact. And, you know, like I said to you, it's a political hot potato at the moment. A lot of people have strong opinions on both sides and it's not something I'm getting involved in. I'm just stating facts. Donald Trump has Scottish ancestry. The word Trump is not Scottish. That comes from his father's side, which I believe is German. Trump is not a Scottish name whatsoever. The McLeod side would be Scottish. Very Scottish name. But that was it. 10 Scottish American presidents. 10 presidents who were American in every sense of the word, but were actually Scottish. Who knew? There is even a very tenuous link, very, very tenuous link, with the man himself, George Washington. Now, very tenuous, but there's even a little bit of a family connection there, which I find very fascinating. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative and educational and interesting, maybe, to know that the connections that I feel with America, Scotland and America, are actually just so deep and intricate. They go back so long in history, and I think America, the, how it is today, is really, in some ways, in many ways, the result of Scottish people, for one reason or another, deciding to get out of their lands and take themselves over to America. Fascinating. I love this story and I want to know more. I want to learn more about this. So thanks for watching, guys. I'd love to know your thoughts down below in the comments, please. Let me know what you think about any of these presidents. If you know more about some of them, you might have done deep research on some of them. Give me your thoughts. Be very interested and curious to know. So thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Until the next adventure, I hope you have a good night, morning, evening, afternoon, or whatever time of day it is, wherever you are in the world. Take care.